Good morning, friends. Uh, it's Friday. It's uh, the 72nd day of Russia's invasion in Ukraine. And you're here. You continue to care. You continue to pray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I, I mentioned this a couple days ago. We're at a very key point in time when uh, every couple weeks or so, the entire world community attempts to shift the narrative away from the w horrible things that are happening in Ukraine, from away from what Russia is doing towards many other alternative narratives or just to look away in some other direction. And over the last 48 hours, there has been an intensive push away from the war in Ukraine, and yet you're still here. And when you share this, when you comment, when you like, when you get the word out, it makes a huge difference in this very thing. So praise God, even though every attempt so far in the last 48 hours to shift the narrative keeps falling flat, there's still the push happening. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. But we've got some amazing things to celebrate today. Yes, there are some areas we want to pray into, but we got to start with hope, don't we? We've got to start from this place encouraged by what he's doing. And it's incredible. Literally, 2 a.m. last night, a Forbes article came out saying, after the, the Moskva uh, being sunk, the ship the, the Ukrainians should go after, the real cherry, would be the Admiral Makarov. It's a 409-foot uh, missile, uh, guided missile cruiser. It is, and it has a limited ability to provide protection for ships around it. And yet, it be, as we said this, with the the system going down, the radar system on, and the and the anti-missile system on the Moskva going down, who's going to protect the Makarov? Well. They were using a radar system on Snake Island. You guys remember two days ago, two ra they took that out and took out two Raptor-class patrol boats. Well, guess what? This morning, they hit the Makarov. They hit the Admiral Makarov. This is incredible. Praise him. God is on the move. God is on the move. Man, they are attempting to get off those sailors. Again, pray for, for, for uh, limited loss of life. Pray, pray, but this ship is going down and with it, another another layer of the protection of the Black Sea Fleet. L listen, they're taking them out one at a time. Biggest ship, biggest ship. L listen, this is amazing. The fear that it must be going through the Black Sea Fleet right now has got to be 211. There is no place to hide. They they cannot, they, they've been using the Black Sea Fleet to block in the uh, Ukrainian port of Odessa. They've been using the Black Sea Fleet to fire on, on Mariupol, fire on different places throughout Ukraine, and they are losing that ability. Praise God. This is massive. And again, it's a huge thing because you could go, well, you know, the you remember in, in Russia how they tried to spin the narrative that, well, Moskva, maybe it was an old ship. Well, guess what? The Makarov is, was launched in 2017. It was the most modern of the ships in the Black Sea, and yet... Guys, they're going to lose. Again, we've been praying for the narrative to be ripped wide open in Russia. Things like this make that happen. So praise God. All right. So another thing is we saw is um, Russia's is they have a limited number of drones because they can't replace the parts. And they lost another seven yesterday uh, in Donetsk area alone, in Donbass uh, alone. Another big thing, though, is is that Russia... So the Ukrainians have been fighting with T-72 tanks, which T-72 tanks, the base design is from 1969. Well, the Russians have more modern tanks, right? They have the T-90, the, the T-90M, and in fact, they just put out their biggest one, which is the Breakthrough, of Prariv 3, and guess what? It was taken out in the field. Guys, there's no place to hide. No amount of, of military power is enough to stop the, the, both the creativity of the Ukrainians and the way that they're using javelins and star streaks and everything else. Listen, uh, this is a huge morale boost for the Ukrainians. Again, because the Russians want to declare that they're, they're impenetrable. But man, they are getting them. Uh, another neat thing that a, a creativity of the Ukrainians, they are using Soviet era, like 1955 era, um, uh, hand, uh, hand grenade, these grenades that are meant to, to attack uh, so, um, tanks, 
uh, they deliver like 20 tons of, of thrust straight through metal. They, it's just massive amount, just that they're a small grenade, but in, no, normally nobody uses them because you have to you know, deploy it so close that it's basically a suicide mission. Well, guess what they're doing? They're using these Ukrainian made octocopter uh, drones to lower them straight onto the tanks and they're turning every tank into a death trap. I've said this before, and, uh, their Russians are losing the ability to get people to climb into tanks because they're realizing it's a death trap. This is huge for morale. Praise God. Come on, keep it, keep it going. Um, Another thing, though, what we continue to pray for is that the truth would be revealed, especially as people try to shift the narrative to lesser things or to limited peace or make a ceasefire happen so that we can get our food back, whatever. It's really important that the truth continues to come alight in a way that the world can process, that the world can understand, and, and uh, again, that they're not overwhelmed, that they go blank, but actually can process it. So here's some of the ways that the truth has come out. The UN, okay, you guys remember, the UN has said, because uh, they're always the latest to the party, but when they say it, it's it, uh, so many different groups that normally wouldn't listen sit up. The UN says it has documented cases of Ukrainian men being executed and sent to camps in Russia and Belarus. Do you guys remember what I asked you guys to pray yesterday and the day before? It's for this, that what's happening in occupied territories is revealed so that people understand they can't let Russia keep what they took. That's what the whole ceasefire talk is. Just ceasefire at any cost. No, no, the cost is too high. The abuses are so real. Praise God, it's coming to light. In Kherson, uh, they are. Um, they have set up multiple roadblocks. They are starting to. Uh, they're. They're trying to. Uh, to block. They're trying to uh, conscript. Conscript men. They're attempting to. To uh, you know, deport people. They are attempting to take. They have a long list of people that they view as enemies. Anybody who has ties to the Ukrainian government or to the West, missionaries, pastors. They've got a whole long list, and so they are. And so pray right now for the people in Kherson to hide well, to to avoid these checkpoints, to to be able to to stay free and continue to fight back against the Russian occupation, but also pray that these kind of things get more revealed more and more as they're doing this. A huge thing that happened was Biden had a call with Otto Schultz, the uh, chancellor of Germany yesterday, and he got him to say on record that they would not in any way accept any of the the uh, the things that Russia has taken as far as territorially, they would not recognize. That's that that might it might sound like why, duh. But this is a huge shift from the Germans who've tried to stay on the sidelines. This is massive, and he's gone on record. It's down. It's in ink. We're not going to back off from that. So praise God. That's huge. Uh, another thing is that um, Russia right now is using uh, as the symbol of the the liberators is this little old lady, uh, Anna, Anna Ivanova. Uh, she, what she, Ivanovna, she, what she did is when she saw the Russians coming in the Kharkov area, she ran out with a Soviet flag thinking it would, uh, not because she was glad to see them, but hoping that it would assuage them so they wouldn't destroy her house. Well, guess what? The Russians destroyed her house anyway. She wasn't, so, but she's being used as the face of liberation. But the evidence of the fact that little old ladies don't sell, they actually then photoshopped a young lady in a skin tight suit into the picture, be it welcoming the liberators. But this is the face. They're literally down to photoshopping things because they can't find a single soul who's glad to see the Russians continue to pray that these kind of silly things come to light. One of the things they're seeing, um, Navalny's group did uh, on the spot interviews with people on the street, which is shocking that people would say anything. But basically what it comes down to is 30 and under who have access, who, who use the internet or internet savvy or, or inter, you know, uh, web natives, they know what's going on and they're aware and they're freaked out. The people who are 30 and up, they actually, who just get everything from the TV, guess what? They still don't know what's going on. Continue to pray that the, the silliness would be revealed. And uh, we've mentioned this, that there are many different battles uh, of on that are becoming visible. I don't know if I mentioned this one. It happened a few days ago. But the, the so if you can imagine someone who's a combination of share 
and uh, like uh, Liza Minnelli and uh, and Elizabeth Taylor. A uh, woman's name is Ala Pugachova. She is the goddess from the, the late uh, Soviet Union all the way today. She's on all the TV all the time. And she is married to a guy by the name of Galkin. Galkin is Ukrainian born. He came out against the war very early and somehow ha and fled the country. But um, what's happened is in attempting to nullify his voice on, on public uh, TV, on TV, they've called him out saying that he's gay, that his kids aren't even his kids and all this kind of stuff. Well, what that's done is if is Ala Pugachova's former husband, Filip Kukurov, uh, he is the godfather of, of the, of the uh, pop scene in Russia. He's come out and just comes out with guns a-blazing, saying, how dare you? I'll say this, Russians are more likely to listen to Filip and Allah than they are to their own propaganda people. So this is huge. Keep praying that these kind of things keep coming to light, um, that, that divisions within the official narrative keep coming. Another thing that's happened is Russia again has bombed the uh, Holy Dormition uh, Svetogorskaya Lavra, which is uh, Orthodox monastery. It's an extremely holy site. It's five or six hundred years old, uh, five hundred years old, and it is. Um, and and again, the narrative of liberation kind of falls on deaf ears because it's actually a Russian Orthodox, not even Ukrainian Orthodox site. So, guys, continue to pray that these kind of things reach into Russia, where people recognize that. That this is an unholy war. And um, in Belarus, Belarus has said they're doing these, um, uh, um, they're doing exercises, but don't worry, it's nothing. We're not going to do war. Well, guess what? Belarus, they, they have a documented uh, uh, missile firing from Gamel, Gamel um, the, uh, in Belarus towards, towards Ukraine pray that this somehow puts the 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 you know puts the the pressure on belarus to back up every time they've tried to go uh pray that it reaches the people every time they try to go uh to engage in ukraine something happens the the people in belarus stop it from happening pray that keeps happening um also uh the ministers of foreign affairs of lithuania estonia and latvia are in uh, Kiev right now pray that they actually get um, understanding of what's happening to a point and are able to communicate a message back to the EU, back to NATO of what is actually happening uh, in, in words that they can hear and they can respond appropriately. Um, man, the UN, okay, so the US took over the Security Council. A different country leads it every month. So they've taken over for the month of May. Uh, this is planned, it's not a big deal normally, but obviously it's a big deal now. But they had their meeting yesterday and honestly, they didn't do anything. They really, uh, in fact, um, U.S. actually succumbed to allowing the narrative to move towards dealing with the food crisis that's coming out of Russia's invasion. And so a Ukrainian uh, ambassador called this out. I mean, he was like, you had your own general secretary shot at by the Russians and you still won't say anything, revealing the rank uh, you know, uh, inability of U the UN to do anything. Um, and again, just revealing that we'll get to food in a minute. It is an issue, but guys, this is issue isn't going away with a ceasefire. It's going away when Russia is dealt with. Um, all right. So another thing is China, China, every so often they attempt to move to support Russia and then they get their hands snapped and they, and they back up, pray they get their hands smacked again because they are once again exploring an, or, or an agreement. The way India is exploring an agreement of rupees for rubles, where they have a system, um, of, uh, they have a system called, uh, union pay and Russia has one called Mir where they would interact so that they could actually financially support Russia. Pray, pray, pray that that gets cut off, that they get smacked down, that it's revealed to the world what China is doing. And uh, again, they keep trying to do these things. Pray they get smacked down again. India. Okay, we mentioned India. India has continued to either abstain from votes. They've tried to act like they're in the middle. Man, they are fully in Russia's uh, pocket. Um, they're getting Russia oil on the cheap. They're, they're supporting them financially. Well, the Dutch 
called them out, called them out hardcore, said, how dare you basically to India abstain uh, from these motions in the General Assembly when, how dare you, um, when, when it's absolutely in violation of the UN Charter, what's happening? Well, India responded with, you, uh, with kindly don't patronize us. We know what to do. We, so, but why is that important? So a lot of times, uh, um, so if you have major states like the US and UK and France and Germany, and what will happen is they won't go head to head with another major power, but what they'll do is they'll allow one of the smaller states to try out to see if there's a way to take and make a shot at some of these other big uh, um, countries. And so I, I really feel like uh, the Dutch stepping out is really a first attempt of EU, NATO, the Western powers to try to take on these unaligned countries like India, UAE, and China. And pray that that continues, that moral outrage continues to rise and, uh, and begins to destabilize those governments of those countries. All right, um, in the same way that, that that's what's happened in Germany and it's forced Otto Schultz to rise up. Um, we mentioned this is that the, the, president, the president of Germany finally admitted, oops, I screwed up, I screwed up, forgive me. And as a result, Zelensky got on the call with him and so they've been able to kind of soothe over some things. I expect we'll see Otto Schultz showing up in Kyiv very soon, which is huge for, again, support and providing the support, but also that Germany would provide the needed uh, heavy artillery that only they can provide. Uh, they have the, the biggest mobile howitzers. Um, uh, one of the things that's happened in the last 24 hours is there was a whole group of, of feminists who p spoke out and basically said, yeah, what Russia's doing is bad, but we shouldn't get involved. Well, there was a massive outcry of the greatest thinkers, multiple Nobel laureates, all of them writing, yeah, well, you guys haven't been through a war yet. This is bad. This is, we've got to stand or we're going to go backwards. So, so that's a huge shift in the German narrative that we've been praying for and we're seeing the results of. All right. Um, finally, let's see. Um, the world, the world food program has called out what Russia has done and how it's affecting the world food supply. And, um, I'll, I'll get to that. Um, and, and they expect export prices for wheat have already risen by 22% and corn by 20%. And that's on top of steep rises from 2021. Why is this important? Because, um, let, let me put it this way is 15% uh, of all the world's calorie in, uh, uh, consumption comes from wheat. 19.5% of it comes from corn. If, if that's not just crazy to you, that, that's nuts. 34.5% of the world's calories come from wheat and corn. Together, I won't go into all the details. Together, Russia and Ukraine make up 4% of the entire world's calorie input. And so when you take 4% out of the market, suddenly, especially much of that going to un uh, um, underdeveloped countries, wow, the, you're gonna see food prices rising, you're gonna see famine. So this is real, which is only, it's not a reason to push for a ceasefire because ceasefire is not going to happen. Russia has made that clear, but that they have to be crushed in the field. So like this taking out uh, the uh, Admiral Makarov is huge, but also we need to see Russia broken in the field. Uh, I mentioned that yesterday they are beginning a counteroffensive in Kharkov uh, towards, um, uh, and on the Kharkov and Izum side, pray that they're able to push through and cut off Izum. But Zelensky did admit that they don't expect to be ready to make a true major counteroffensive across the board until mid-June as they're waiting for NATO supplies to come in. And uh, so uh, continue to pray that that timetable gets moved up massively. Um, also, uh, there, is massive, there was massive shelling on the Krivi Rig. Um, uh, front yesterday, again, as I said this, every time they do that, the goal is the next day to be able to roll in with a ground defense. Pray that no, the ground defense comes to nothing. Pray for that. That's huge. Um, also, um, 
Um, pray for Mariupol. They are attempting another evacuation today. The Ukrainian forces are holding so strong. As we've said, they've turned the uh, the uh, six stories underground of Azovstal into a dungeon that is uh, every Russian soldier's worst nightmare. They have prepared it. They've got traps set. They know every ambush. They know that place like the back of their hands. The Russians don't. They're just being thrown in as, as cannon fodder. Pray, pray, pray for that the Russians not to go in uh, and for their own sake and pray for the Ukrainians to hold. But the Ukrainian forces are begging. They've got 500 wounded uh, and uh, they are, pr they're asking for their, their, those wounded to get out because they, the Russians bombed their field hospital. So they have no means to care for them. Pray for those to be able to, to get out again with the civilians who are still trapped. Again, last count, there were 200 civilians, including 30 children. Pray for them to get to safety today. Uh, upwards, almost 500 have actually reached Zaporozhye so far. Pray that they all get all the way out. This is this is big. Um, also, um, pray. Um, we mentioned, I think, yesterday or the day before that Israel, that Lavrov, a foreign minister, had spoken out and called Zelensky basically Hitler. He basically said that Hitler had Jewish blood. Well, this is a bridge too far. And we were praying that Israel would recognize this and push hard. And they did push back. But believe it or not, the evidence of how hard they pushed back was Putin called up Bennett, the prime minister who's left leaning, why he's he's trying to play both sides, is um, he is he's he's called him up and he's apologized. Wow. Okay, listen, if Putin apologizes, it's serious. But guys, that's awesome. It shows Putin's weakness. It shows how desperate he is for allies. But guys, please pray. Please pray that this, what has happened, will shove a deep divide in Bennett's ruling coalition so that they are forced, like Otto Schultz, to man up and actually stand against Russian uh, Russian occupation and Russian invasion. Okay, guys, they have some amazing technological support they could provide Ukraine with, some spyware that would be super helpful. And just on a moral level, to stand with Ukraine against the kind of concentration camps that they're being submitted to in the ways that Jews were during World War II. So pray that the Jewish people actually rise up. Um, uh, pray also again. Um, pray for food to food supplies. If we can destroy the Russian, uh, uh, the Russian, uh, um, if the Russian uh, uh, fleet can be destroyed in the Black Sea, then a lot of wheat can get out. Even though the Russians are stealing wheat massively from the occupied territories, much more wheat can still get out through Odessa, and that can help to alleviate the suffering around the world. Pray for that. Um, pray uh, the UN. So as I said, yesterday's meeting came to nothing. Well, the Russians are having their own informal meeting because they're not in charge um, uh, where they're going to attempt today to sell their narrative of what's happening in Ukraine. Pray that gets shut down. Pray. Well, this is what's happened before. Their lives became so obvious. Even China and India couldn't stand with them. Pray that they try something stupid that reveals how bad, how, how, how confused they are, reveals the lies so that, again, India and China can't even stand with them. Um, awesome. Okay, so in the last bit, the Russians, again, praise God, they cannot make any headway anywhere. Uh, a lot of it comes down to morale. It comes down to logistics. Uh, it comes down to better intelligence and better artillery uh, in the Ukrainians. But so what they've been trying to do is they've been trying to sow panic all across Ukraine. They are flying in with massive, they're doing massive amounts of flyovers. People are having to, uh, to run to bunkers. They're hitting railway stations. They're hit, trying to hit arms shipments. They're hitting electric substations. They're hitting, they're trying to sow uh, a fear and panic. So again, we, we talked about this. It comes in waves. Pray that the Ukrainian people would stand against panic and fear. They would stand against confusion and they would rise up in courage. Uh, they are exhausted. When you know when you're tired, you're open to fear. Pray that they would be encouraged and strengthened, particularly the church. Guys, uh, again, many of you have seen the video we posted um, of what our friends Vladimir 
Sandra and Lily are doing in Nipra as they're rising up, as they're getting people out of harm's way, they're getting medicines to the people who are most vulnerable, getting food to those with no food, uh, feeding families, uh, you know, thousands of loaves of bread a day, uh, hundreds of families fed every day. They're going into Kharkov, they're going into occupied territories, they're going right up to the front lines, they're ministering to, to frontline troops of the Ukrainian army, they're actually ministering to uh, Russian prisoners of war. This is the church. We're called to do that. We're called to rise up, encourage, pray for their them to be encouraged and strengthened and filled with energy because 72 days is a very long time. We're at over 10 weeks that they've been going 24 seven. Pray for them to be able to find rest, to find uh, restoration. But guys, I've got really good news. Lord willing, at noon today, in about an hour and a half, we're going to have an interview with Vladimir and Lilia. You're going to get to meet them. And so if you've got some things you would like us to ask them, go ahead and email us at info, I-N-F-O, at ariselife.org. And we'll try to see if we can't use some of your questions as well. We want you to get to know them so you can pray more effectively for them. But also, if you would like to give, as I mentioned, we sent another $9,000 uh, on Wednesday. And uh, honestly, I think I overshot. I, I I, I, I didn't have the latest numbers from our accountants, so I just guessed. And I think we're uh, several thousand dollars in the hole on that. So uh, your gifts are so needed. Your gifts might already be there, right? If you could consider giving, again, go to ariselife.org. Uh, slash help Ukraine. There's the information. There's a button there. You will have to uh, make a registration. If you are coming from another country, it's going to ask, uh, it, it, it will ask you for a phone number. That's for security reasons, so nobody else can use it. It's a totally safe site because it goes to arisealife.churchcenter.com is where it ends up taking you. And what you're going to do uh, when you click on it, it's going to ask you either for a phone number or there's an option for an email. If you're outside of the United States, you got to use an email. A phone number won't work. And again, these are just for security, for your security to keep your information uh, um, safe. So um, again, if you want to give, we love that. But also, if you like these in print form, you can, as always, I'd never get enough of them. Go to arisealife.org slash Ukraine. But guys, guys, he's on the move. He's on the move. I mean, guys, I, I can't say it enough. The kind of breakthroughs we're seeing, man, the Admiral Moskva and the Admiral Makarov. That means two flagships of the Russian Navy have gone down. No flagships have gone down in year, decades, uh, let alone the Russians, not since 1904, 1905. So guys, this is huge. Pray, pray, pray that the cracks in the facade in Russia are, are, are revealed. But also, um, another thing I've totally forgotten to mention is there is real sign of an anti-war movement in Russia in that they're starting to see massive amounts of explosions at, at, at military sites. Uh, things like there's a missile factory in Perm or there they've got in Tivir there was a, a, a missile uh, a research facility and where they produce the, the propellant for missiles. Over and over again, we're seeing this happen. Pray that this continues to rise up. A really beautiful thing happened in Novosibirsk, uh, Akadem Garadok, where people are starting to spray paint uh, the outlines of the people who were died in the streets in Bucha. They're trying to get the word out. They're trying to make people ask questions. Pray that the Russians continue to rise up. But guys, I'll say it again and again and again. You and I aren't going to pray effectively till our hearts are filled with hope. And all of the things I said might still leave you in a place of fear and despair. If that's the case, I want you to know God is here and he wants to touch you in a new way. So Father, I ask right now that you would cover every person listening with your joy, your peace, and your hope. Fill us with the sense of your presence. Fill us to overflowing with love and love, love, love for the Ukrainians, for the Russians, for the Belarusians. Lord, that we would know that we are loved by you so we have more than enough love to give to others. We love because you first loved us, Lord. And so right now, bless each person. If you have a need, your needs matter. Just go ahead and say, need prayer. And we, we have an amazing team of people who would love to pray for you, but you've got a lot of other people around here who'd also love to pray for you. Just say, need prayer, and you can say what you need, and they would love to pray for you. We've seen so many miracles happening by text, as you guys have attested, and, uh, and 
and we would love to see it. Could be physical, it could be emotional, psychological, uh, it could be uh, financial, it could be relational. We're believing God for huge breakthroughs for you. But also, if you'd like to be a part of the mentor groups we've got going uh, on Zoom, you can go to uh, just say women's group for the women's group, and uh, Jill Hawes and Mariana Sikowska will reach out to you and invite you to that, give you the details. If you, as a man, you want to be part of a group, uh, say men's group, and Gary Phillips will reach out to you and provide you with that. But guys, he is on the move. He is on the move, and you're a huge part of it. Guys, I'm so grateful to each of you all, and I'm really excited that we're gonna get to be able to share Vladimir and Lilia with you in about an hour and a half. So be looking, 12 o'clock. If you, if, um, if, you, if you don't get notifications, you should see a little bell um, uh, there on the bottom of this video while it's live. Click on that and you should be getting notifications when we go live so you don't miss a moment of that because it's gonna be super special today. But we love you all. Have an amazing day.